It's a good evening to be able to get back out and about again without fear of uh, slipping and sliding all the way here. Uh, we're actually able to make it here and be able to fellowship one with another as we go through our worship. Tonight, the circle of faith or building our faith, uh, however, you know, whichever uh, title we want to use, I put on the slides, building faith, uh, you know, it kind of falls a little bit of a circle. It's just a, you know, a very simple process like we kind of looked at this morning is that Christianity is not a complex thing. You know, it can get very deep in our discussion and our understanding, but yet the principles are very simple. They're very basic, and so if we stick to the basics, we can continue to grow. You know, I don't start off learning how to do trigonometry or geogebra or anything like that. You start off with basic math, addition, subtraction. Then you start building and growing from there. And so the same goes with our faith. You know, we don't go straight into uh, debating uh, the the finer details of things, we start off with learning how to grow, how to build ourselves, and then we use that same idea as we continue through life. Primarily looking at one verse and be able to pull this whole sermon out of this verse. We'll look at a couple other supporting scriptures as we go. But Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Now on our outline, I've highlighted, th made three words bold. We have to come, we have to believe, and then we have to diligently seek. Those three things are our principles for building faith. And this is why I call it the circle of faith, because unfortunately I didn't uh, adjust my arrows on here. Uh, but uh, there are arrows that connect them in a clockwise pattern, and it continues over and over. We come, we believe, we seek it diligently, and then we repeat the cycle again. Because once we have sought it, now we desire more, so we come to him for more, and we just keep on repeating the pattern. It's kind of like finding one of these newfangled things called a turnabout and you get inside of it and you can never figure out where you're going because you end up doing multiple circles before you finally figure out which direction to go. When it comes to faith, I don't want to get back out. I want to stay in the circle. I want to keep on building, keep on growing. And that is the secret of building our faith is really just going to God. Come to me. How many times have we heard that as we look through the scriptures, as we go through the teachings of Christ, as we go through the apostles, as we go through the Old Testament even? He just says, come to me. If you will be mine, then. So much he gives us there. Now, I do have a typo in this next point here about midway in. Uh, apparently, autocorrect thought I was doing something other than what I meant to say, and I didn't catch it before the thing. I will read it as it's supposed to be. The word beloved in the middle there is actually supposed to be believed. So each person in Hebrews chapter 11 who had great faith attributed to them didn't see God's reward until after they came to him. They believed on him and they diligently sought him. Now they believed God and they were given attribute for by faith this person did these things. However, they did not see the reward until after they did it. You know, we have to go to school and go through the process before we get our final grade. We don't come in first day of class and say, here's your A plus for the semester. We have to earn that. Once we have gone through the process, then we receive it. So biblical faith to understand what that is, if we back up a few verses to Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now the hope here is not, oh, I sure hope I get a bicycle for my birthday without having any real expectation of it. It is, Jesus has said that he died for me. He shed his blood for me. If I become a servant of his, he will give me the blessings of eternal life in heaven with him. 
That is the hope we can have. Jesus has said, I will do it by all the things that he has said everywhere else. I believe what he says. Keeping that in mind, kind of use an illustration of a, getting a grade, but throughout here, as we do this right here, I think about food. Imagine that. We have too many fellowships, by the way, because I've enjoyed way too many of them. But I'll still keep coming to them as you keep on planning them. But as we think about food, if I go to the restaurant, first off, if I get hungry and I want food, where do I go? I need to go where there is food. So this afternoon, after morning service, we went to the Mexican restaurant. I do believe that there is food there. Sitting there looking at the menu, it looks like there will be something here. And I find something that I think I will like. I might even ask the waitress about the food or about what's there. Do I go to where it's at? If I just sat here on the uh, pew thinking, I'm sure hungry, I wish I had some food, and I never went to where it was at, will I ever get a meal. Not likely unless one of y'all sees me a couple days later and say, have you left from that spot? Here's some crackers. You know, pull something out of your pocket or something, but I have to go to where it is at. I have to come to that location. So in the idea of what are we doing with our faith, why is it that when we start looking in the Gospels, we see so many people come to and follow Christ. What does he have? What is he doing? What is he saying? He has something there that he is preaching about that has people's attention. They're looking for something greater than what they had, and that it was a closer relationship, a more meaningful relationship with God. They were sitting there going day by day, going through the actions and the motions. They would go to the temple and do their thing, but are they being satisfied? Are they being filled? Are they being given food to really boost themselves? And all of a sudden, Jesus comes speaking of all these things. Hey, we've been going to the temple all this time, and it says someone will come. Is this him? And they go and listen to him. So they come to him to listen, to find out what is there. Just coming is not enough because once we have come and listened to God's word, we now have a choice to make. Do we believe it? Do we not believe it? Do we stay and listen? Do we walk off and leave it behind? Some people did, but what we can also see is in John 14, verse 6, Jesus said along the way, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There's an attention getter right there. We've been going to the temple. We know what's going on. We just go there and we're with the, the presence of God. We're giving our offerings to him. Now Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. What are we going to do with that? I'm sitting at the restaurant looking at the menu, but is that enough for me to do anything with? I have to act on this. I must do something with that menu before food will show up. Not all that followed Christ believed him. Not all of them kept on coming and following him around. Some left, some followed around and mocked him, some rejected his teachings altogether. But there are some that did start to believe what was going on. So as we start looking at this, we came, we followed Christ, but then we start to believe what he has to say. As we start to believe it, we notice that thinking about the idea of the food, okay, I now believe that they do have food at this restaurant here. I see the menu, I hear people talking about it, I see things coming out of the kitchen going to other tables, okay. Something that I do at restaurants, I'll watch, you know, if I get a seat where I can see the food coming out, I will, and I will watch it, and you'll start seeing me do this number right here. Sometimes it looks really good. Sometimes it's like, I'm not too sure about that dish. I'm, ooh, that one looks really good. 
I believe that there's something about this. I believe this place has food and I can obtain it. I believe there is something about the teachings of Christ as we follow him around, as we read about him today. There's something there. If we believe the message that Christ brought us, then we have to act on it. We have to do something about what we have heard. If we go back and start looking at the book of Acts, we see where people actually did believe and what they did. At the first gospel sermon, they were told what they must do if they believed. Acts 2 and verse 38, Then Peter said to them, Repent, let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Do we believe what he has to say? If we believe it, then we're going to place our order. If we believe it as a Christian, as a person that is seeking to serve God, seeking to become a Christian, then we will believe by doing what the Apostle Peter said to do. And we see what happened. They've been given another piece of information. Now, do I believe what he said enough to act on it? For those that did, we see in verse 41, then those who gladly received the word were baptized. And that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. Now, many more were there. Many more received the word. Maybe they had to think about it a little longer. As we go through the book of Acts, we see where other uh, groups were added to the church They all that believed and went through this process. But yet this day, 3,000 gladly accepted his word. It comes with action. It's not enough for me to go to the restaurant and think that there is food there and believe that there is food there. Belief means action has to accompany it. If I believe it enough, then I have to do something about it. If I were to set a $20 bill on this front table right here and say, whoever comes up here to get it can have it, is it yours? It can be. It's not yours until you stand up, come up, and pick it up off the table. We have to do something to receive it. Once we believe and do something about it, we must diligently seek Him. As the verse says in uh, Hebrews eleven six and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek. He has already given us the idea of what he is going to give. Not the idea, but the actual thing. He tells us we can have a life with him in heaven. We can have comfort here on earth. Maybe not in the physical need uh, sense. We have a quite extensive prayer list of people who probably wish they weren't on the prayer list, but are probably glad that they are to know that people are comforting through prayer. We can know that the trials of this time are but a whisper, are but a, a wisp, something simple, quick, easy. So now, as I diligently seek, if I think about that food, I am now going to place my order. When I place my order, now I either have to wait for it to come to me, or in the cases where it's a line or a bag or something, I have to go and get it. If I go and pick up my bag that says, hey, this is your order, okay, here's my bag, I now have to seek it. I have to open the bag, reach inside, pull it out. I believe it is there. I reach for it. I grab it. I stay for the whole process. I don't just place the order and say, huh, well, oh well, and I'll go home. I wait for it. I seek it out. Much like Christianity, when we are signed up for, uh, to follow Christ, then we follow him continually. In Luke chapter 1, in these verses here in 74 and 75, it is the prophecy of the one who is to come. It is talking of Christ. second part of 74 starts off saying, Be, being delivered from the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. He will deliver us from fear. He will deliver us into holiness and righteousness. We have to do so all the days of our life. It's not a, hey, okay, I'm good. What happens when I take and get hungry again? I have to go back through the process again. 
those who diligently seek him. In uh, the book of Acts, we see where Paul is being run out of city to city, and he's run out of Thessalonica, and he heads over and talks to the Bereans, and the Bereans are given such a compliment. More noble are these than those of Thessalonica, for they search the scriptures daily whether these things were so. Paul brought the news of Christ to them, and they searched the scriptures to see if what he was saying was true. They didn't just run them out of town. They listened. We see those who believed in Acts 2.42, who says they continued steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. They diligently sought more information. They didn't just say, oh, okay, this is, I killed the Messiah. I killed the Son of Man. What do I need to do? Oh, no. And then he says, well, repent and be baptized. Okay, check that off the list. I just got baptized. I'm good now for life, right? No. They continued steadfast, diligently seek him. We must continue day by day. Do we follow Christ each day? Do we diligently seek him? He's not looking just for a long list of names. If that's all he wanted, they could have said, all right, who's feel sorry about uh, uh, killing uh, Christ? He didn't do anything to any of us, but our leaders said kill him, so we all got behind our leaders. And everyone raises their hand. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's a big list. How much shorter does that list get when he says, you have to repent and be baptized. You have to feel sorry for it. You have to show in your life that you're sorry for it. You must do something. Now all of a sudden that list gets real small. He wants those who are faithful daily. As we continue to diligently seek him, we continue to come to him and learn more about him. We diligently seek. That means we continue to go to him for more information. We've learned a little bit now. I want more. Let me go back to the source. Let me go back to the scriptures. Search them. Read them. Understand them. Think about what it is I've just read. I've go back and look more. Now I go back to the believe. Do I believe what I'm reading? Do I incorporate that into my life? Do I continue to diligently seek him? Thankful for the rewards that he gives me. Thankful for the opportunities that I have. And then do I start the cycle again? And again. And again. Now mentally I'm not thinking that, oh, I'm in my, I've, I've got to come to him. Now I've got to believe him. Now I've got to seek it just becomes natural. Every time we pick up our Bible, we repeat this cycle. How many times do we repeat the cycle? Do we go to our Bibles? Do we seek Him out? Do we have faith in Christ? Do we have the faith that makes us want to diligently seek Him? Or do we fall into the rut? Does our vehicle get broken down on the side of the road and we don't get to keep on going through that turnabout? We don't get to keep making that loop. Remember the first part of the verse that we started with of Hebrews 11.6. Without faith it is impossible to please Him. We must continue in our faith. It's not enough just to show up, get our ticket punched, and we're good for life. Everything has an expiration to it. If I don't use my faith, I will lose my faith. I must continue to seek Him, believe Him, come to Him. Do I do that? God has set before us the simple plan of salvation. He has given us all things we need for life in godliness. He tells us how to be pleasing unto Him. He tells us what He loves from His children. How to be pleasing is such an easy thing because, as we said this morning, nothing that He has given us to do is outside of our ability to do. Some things might be difficult at times, but it's not outside of our abilities. We just have to do it. Are we reaching out to Him? Are we going to Him? That's the first step. We have to go to where He is at. 
Now, physically, we can come to each other's house. We cannot physically go to Christ and sit down and listen to his teaching. But we can take and open up our Bibles and read the words that he has to say. We can read the words from the apostles who got the words from Christ. We can read and understand what it is he wants us to do today. Once we've come to him, do we believe him? Do we acknowledge the uh, beauty of the great things, the rewards that he has waiting for us? And do we continue to seek him each day of our life? What will we do each and every day? Will we seek God or will we lose our faith? I pray that we continue to build our faith and continue to try and reach out to others around and help them to either find it or build it themselves and continue in it. The great thing I love about fellowships is the ability we have to encourage one another. To show up on a cold, windy night like tonight to encourage one another. Hopefully we can continue to encourage each other and reach out to those around us. If there are any that need have needs of the invitation, need to be able to come to Christ, need help building their faith, we offer the invitation while together we stand and sing.